Hey what's up guys, today we're going to start creating our combat system. So we have our three scripts over here, the AI combat, base combat and player combat. In this episode we're going to focus on the base combat, so we're going to declare ourselves some a hit point field, we're going to create some property as well and a on damage on the function. So without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so let's start by creating ourselves a combat folder. So go ahead in the script folder, hit create, new folder, and this one is going to be called combat. In there, we will start by declaring ourselves a new C sharp script that we'll call um, base combat, which is of course uh, like all the other system we're making. Base combat is going to be the base script, and then uh, for the player and for the AI, we're gonna inherit from base combat and just. Um, and I read pretty much all we have in there. So, let's get started writing this script down. The first thing I will start by doing is actually I'm going to declare myself a new class that I'll call, so a public class, Damage Info. And the reason I do this, and I'll show you in a second, Damage Info is going to be some kind of, uh, some kind of container basically. So, say you have a spell, a flying ability, or um, some kind of bow and arrow and the arrow itself would be the container of the damage so um, say you're shooting an arrow well you want the arrow to have some damage info in it because once it leaves the player it's not part of the player anymore so damage is not calculated from the player to the enemy it's, it's like it's inside the arrow and that arrow is going to contain stuff like public int amount which is going to be the it's going to be the amount of damage that we'll set when we shoot, and uh, later on it's going to contain some other stuff such as a uh, spell effect. Is it gonna chill the target? Is it gonna poison the target? What is it going to do basically? So this is what damage info is going to be. It is going to be for our uh, projectiles a little bit later on, and we're also going to use it for the melee attack as well. But for now we're going to leave it like that. It's a simple int. And yeah, that's pretty much it. All right, so now for the fields in there, we'll start with a protected int hit point, and we're going to set this to say 10 by default. And after that, we'll do protected int max hit point, which is going to be 10 as well. And for these two, I'm going to create properties. So public int hit point, this time with a cap, capital letter, and this is going to be uh, set is going to equal hit points is equal to value and then get is going to be return hit point just like this um, we're going to do the same exact thing for max hit points so I'm going to duplicate this change hit point for max hit point and these one as well okay now in terms of uh, things that we can modify, I only want to be able to modify the max hit point, so I'm going to go just above that and do a serialized field. This way I'll be able to see max hit point inside the inspector and I'll be able to modify it right there. Okay, now after that we're going to declare ourselves a private void start. And that private void start is going to call some other kind of start that is going to do pretty much the exact same thing, so uh, public virtual void init combat just like this, and we're gonna call init combat from start. And the reason I wanna have a separate function is that um, I don't always want to be doing that from the start of a, let's say, when, when we spawn an enemy. Maybe I wanna kill the enemy, leave it there in the memory for a while, and then use it again and in order to use it again I'll just take it change its position and recall or well not recall but I'm gonna call again the init combat so during that process I'm never really destroying the object so it's never going to have a start again however I'll be able to call init combat anyway so in there I'll do hit point is equal to max hit point so we'll start full HP and a little bit later on we're gonna have some um, teleportation things as well but for now this is it for the init combat and now let's go ahead and do some other function, some uh, virtual function. So let's do a public virtual void on damage. So this is whenever um, the enemy receive damage, and we're gonna contain, we're gonna have the, um, the damage container in parameter as well. So do damage info, damage just like this. 
So whenever we send damage to an object, we're going to send them the damage info structure as well. And uh, for now, we'll simply do hit point minus equal damage dot amount. And we'll do if hit point is below or equal zero, then we die. So we need a def function, which is basically what we're going to write here. So public virtual void on def. And we're going to take the undef, put it right in our if, just like this. And for now, debug.log, and we'll do name plus has died, simply. Okay, so let's take a look at that again. So we have our damage structure up here that is going to contain pretty much all the damage information and say what kind of damage is it? Is it true damage? Is it uh, poison damage? Is it all that kind of good stuff. We're going to have that a little bit later on in this structure. And then we have the base combat. So everyone that has a base combat script attached to it is going to have hit point, maximum hit point, and also some property to access those. Whenever we want this enemy to be reinitialized, we can simply use the init combat every time. Now, whenever we send damage to that very object, to that very enemy or player, we are going to be using the onDamage function that we'll probably, uh, we'll probably be calling that from a send message. So uh, yeah, we're going to be calling this on damage function. We're going to send the damage structure as well, so the damage info. And after that, uh, we're simply going to check. Well, here we simply do a hit point minus damage, uh, which is going to be fairly simple. But we might want to have some some kind of calculation in there. So if we have like an armor modifier that would be done here, and then we check. Okay, is the hit point below zero? If yes, then we do the on def which is going to be different for pretty much everybody. Uh, for the player, I think that we're not going to stop the game. We're simply going to, um, say, wait a 15 second cooldown, or like maybe maybe like 10 second cooldown, and we're gonna respawn him somewhere. So it just depends on what we wanna do. But since we have it inside uh, the base combat, and this is a virtual function, we'll be able to override it in our player combat. Also, um, Let's go ahead and create those right now. Actually, we're going to go back in the combat folder, create ourselves a player combat, and also create ourselves a AI combat. I'll start by opening the AI combat. I'll just wipe everything in there, just cleaned up for uh, the next videos. So, clean this up, and we're going to inherit from base combat. Just see. Oops. I'll do the same thing for player combat. So we inherit from base combat and then clean it up. Alright, so that's pretty much it for this episode, guys. Um, in the next one, what we're going to do, we're going to create some kind of melee function, so melee attack function. We're going to be doing that inside the player combat. And that's pretty much it. So we're going to actually send damage to the enemy around us using some kind of sphere cast. And then we're going to check, okay, are you in front of us? So maybe some kind of, you know, cone attacked in front of our player. And yep, so that's pretty much it, guys. Thanks for watching. If this was helpful to you, please leave it a like. If you have any question or comment, please leave it in the comment section below. Also, subscribe for more tutorials. Thanks for watching again, and I will see you next episode.